Good evening, everyone. Here we are. We are on our uh, sixth lesson of Romans. We begin chapter 2. Um, there we go. Let's start with a prayer. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so just a brief overview. Um, uh, we're in this second, well, actually in the third portion of the outline here where we begin discussing, well, who is it that's righteous then, right? So if the righteous shall live by faith, which is kind of that theme of the whole book from uh, verses 16 and 17 of chapter 1, Paul goes into the whole discussion, well, who then is righteous, right? And in this first portion of this discussion of who is righteous, um, he is revealing that every human being is unrighteous, that there is none among us that is righteous. And, um, and so it's going to go all the way through chapter 3 here, and we're just beginning chapter 2. Last week, we did this last portion of chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, and we covered that whole section there. And, and that's, that was a discussion about those that don't know the law, uh, those that are outside of the law. And I don't, I'm not sure if I really brought it up, but when we think law, you can't think just Ten Commandments. Don't think so narrowly. Um, you know, the Greek, you've all heard of the word Torah, um, and that comes from the Hebrew. And in the Greek, then, the, the way uh, the Greek-speaking Hebrews would translate Torah, they would use the Greek word for law. But even if we use the word law in a Hebrew sense, um, we also get that, that greater understanding that it's more than just the Ten Commandments, more than just that Decalogue. But we can think of all the books of Moses as the law, even as Jesus himself spoke of the law, right? And he would say the law and the prophets as he's talking about the old scriptures. And, um, and so some, in some broader sense, the law covers the Pentateuch, those first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses. And then there's even a, an, another way of really understanding it. And Torah is is instruction, it's command, it's edict, but it's those words that proceed from the mouth of God. This is the revelation of God to his people. Um, and, uh, and so as God claims uh, the Hebrews as his own, he says, you are my people and I am your God. And, and to know God is to know his will. It is to know his word. And that is what the law is. So here in that, that last section of chapter 1, those that are outside of the law um, are, you know, not just, let's say, the, the Gentile, but it's all who, who have not had that word of God revealed to them. So in other words, they are those that stand apart from any re revelation of God. So they... And, and Paul here um, yanks out from under them any kind of excuse that they might have um, for not knowing God's will, right? Because they still are going to be judged. And then we go to this second section here, and we're, we're going to get at least through uh, verse 11 of chapter 2 and maybe through verse uh, 16, um, and we'll see how that goes. But now Paul is going to start talking about God's wrath against the so-called righteous. It is against those who think they're righteous, those who think they're righteous because they know the will of God and they believe that they do it. Okay? So let's start taking a look at that. Um, don't worry about my squiggly lines. This was my way of marking it up so I can make sure I can talk about everything. Um, I'm going to read this, this first section here, the first five, five verses. 
Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you judge, um, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Okay, so let's treat these here. Paul in those uh, in chapter one uh, talked about people kind of in the third person they them those in chapter two here he becomes very personal he starts using so in in English you can't tell but you there is is singular it's the second person singular so it becomes a very personal it's as if Paul is talking to every one of us individually. And so he is. And he says, therefore, you have no excuse. But then, oh, man, it's, it's that broad term. Because what he's doing here, he's saying, because you are a member of the human race. You are a part of humanity. Every one of you who judges. Right? Right? So, if you are a part of the human race, which every one of us is, and if we participate in this judging of others, he's saying, hey, you, you have no excuse. If you're going to start levying your judgment against others, you've got nothing to stand on. He says, for passing, in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself. Because you, the judge, practice the very same things. And uh, if you'll recall from the end of chapter 1, those things that, that the, the wicked practice, that he says that even you who know the law and who are judging them as being unrighteous, you do those same things, right? Right? All manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice, envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness, gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent people, haughty and boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, right? Um, you know, here in chapter 1, he says, though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to, to, to die, they not only do them, they give approval to them. And Paul here is accusing um, the very people to whom he is writing of the same things. You know, it's, it's that whole thing, you know, get the log out of your own eye before you start looking at the, 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 the uh, speck or the, the, the uh, twig in somebody else's. And, um, and so the highlight thing here, though, is that Paul really grinds it home and makes it very personal. And then in verse 2, we know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice those things, right? Those such things. The ones who do those things, yes, we all know they fall under God's uh, judgment. And they rightly deserve whatever God gives to them. And then he goes on in, in verse 3, do you suppose, O man, right? So again, that, that you who are a part of this humankind, you who judge those who do those things, who practice such things, and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God, right? I mean, what's the difference? They do those things and you do those things. What's the difference? If they violate God's law, they violate God's law, and everyone that does them stands under judgment. 
or do you presume on the this riches session of is no longer being recorded the recording has started so and so in verse 4 here he says do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Um, now, certainly, we know the character of God, that, that he is kind, that he is patient. And I really like this word forbearance. You know, um, it's not a word that we typically use in our current day and age, I guess. But to forbear is to suffer, right? Um, we, we suffer the mask for the sake of those that don't need to be exposed to, to COVID, right? We, we become forbearant in the, in the acts that we do for the sake of others. And, and here, so the, talking about this character of God, this characteristic of God, God forbears with the sin of man and, and, and demonstrates his patience in not destroying all of mankind for a purpose. And Paul here says that that purpose, that, that his kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Right? So through all of this forbearance, you know, it, it, this, this actually brought up that whole thing that, you know, people wonder, well, why does God let such evil things happen? Well, this is partly that answer to that. You know, why would God allow hurricane and tropical storm Isaias to come through and wreak havoc on all of these things and, and kill people and destroy property. He allows it to happen.